So around day 14, oestrogen gets the message it can go backstage because we've already got our blood nest, we've got our lubricant and our egg. There's no need for more oestrogen. With the development of corpus luteum around day 14, then progesterone levels rise. Progesterone is now the star player in the dance of the hormones. So what effect does progesterone have? Progesterone has a ripening effect on the lining of the uterus, putting the finishing touches on the uterus. Progesterone also heightens a woman's mood at this time of the month to the point of increasing her sexual desire at this time of the month. But progesterone has another effect. Let me magnify the cervix so you can see. So the cervix is usually like this, two lips and a mucus plug. Under the effect of progesterone at this time of the month, the mucus plug goes, the lips come up a little tighter and a special form of lubricant is released around the cervix and this lubricant is very profuse, thin and stringy and it is designed to facilitate the entry of sperm up into the uterus. So you can see the stage is set for the entry of man. Did you know that between 200 and 500 million sperm are released with one ejaculation? The sperm cell is the smallest cell in the body. Now sometimes up to half of that sperm comes straight back out. If the sperm meet this cervix, very difficult to gain entry. If the sperm meet this cervix, that lubricant literally grabs that sperm and shoots it up into the uterus. And it's got a long journey, long way to go. Some of them go down the wrong road and they basically die and get absorbed back into the blood. Some of them go down the right road and aha, they've found their prize, which is the egg. Do you know, a young man picked pulled up off the YouTube a little video clip of this journey of the sperm. It's quite fascinating. And you wouldn't believe what they're up against. No wonder God put between 200 and 500 million. <laughs> and I saw a photograph one day of 15 sperm all trying to gain entry. Do you know, as soon as the sperm just gets the tip of its head in, the rest of the egg shuts down, it shuts down. It even releases a toxic fluid to kill off the other sperm. Just incredible. Occasionally, it just so happens that two enter at exactly the same time. That's when the twins share the placenta. Just incredible. As soon as that sperm is in there, its DNA starts to unravel, the DNA of the egg start to unravel, it's just an incredible process and within a matter of days we've got the first two cells. Did you know that the DNA of a new human being is perfectly intact? So when does life begin? There's a lot of discussion on this. Yeah. Within days of conception because that DNA never has been and will never be. I think there's going to be some surprises on the resurrection morning, is that right? <laughs> yes. Do you know, one lady began to cry. She had had a miscarriage at only, only three weeks. She cried when she realised that there will be a little, <laughs> a little soul. <laughs> Incredible. So what happens with conception? With conception, progesterone levels soar 200%. Don't we say when a woman's pregnant, she's just blossoming? My daughter-in-law is just blossoming at the moment. Her baby's due, I think, in about three weeks. If a lady said, well, I didn't blossom, <laughs> what, what would that indicate that she, she's low in progesterone? And there is a reason for that. Now, there is one hormone, progesterone, but there are three hormones to make up estrogen. There's estrone, and that's called E1. And E1 has strong cell proliferator action on the body. There's estradiol and it's called E2 and it has strong cell proliferator action. Whereas estriol is called the delicate estrogen. So we're going to give it a little heart there because it's a delicate estrogen. In, estrogen. In pregnancy it is estriol levels that rise with the progesterone. But if there was no conception, by day 26, 
progesterone's given the message to go backstage, to drop down, and by day 26, estrogen is also given the message to drop. Now when both of those levels drop, the blood supply to the uterus is cut, and when the blood supply to the uterus is cut, then the bloodness comes away and we are once again day one of the monthly cycle.